also shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom! Thank you so much for joining us here at Remnant House, the home of the strong and the very courageous. And Mom and I are always thankful whenever you join us here on the Sabbath day, remembering to keep it holy. Those of you that are joining us here on the chat, always thankful when you join us. Uh, we're here at the East Gate, and uh, I tell you, we are... Uh, truly thankful for everything that Yahuwah is doing. And uh, unfortunately, as we do take a look out into the world, as we uh, take a look at what's going on sort of behind us, if you will, uh, it isn't a pretty picture. And I don't know how many more of these broadcasts I'll be able to do. Uh, so uh, I hope that uh, I'll be able to continue, but we'll see. Amen. Uh, so definitely stay connected with one another and understand that we are walking into very perilous Days And those of you that are making your way to us for the fall feast, uh, we are very excited about that. Those of you that have reached out to us and um, RSVP'd, if you will, uh, we're very grateful for that. And those of you that are still thinking about it, we understand. And we pray that Yahuwah leads you wherever you should go to honor him for the appointed times. Now, these are appointments with the Most High Elohim. Very few people are going to pay any attention to that. Uh, so those of you that are, you are the remnant, you are the special group, the small number on the earth that actually still remembers his ways, that actually still is holding fast to the truth. These are things that, frankly, um, many, many, many people and many groups who consider themselves to be believers have completely disavowed, disconnected themselves from. But these are appointed times. They are his high Sabbaths. And so this is one of the things that we have to continue to do. And in, and in fact, according to Hebrews chapter 10, uh, verse 25, we are supposed to do it all the more as we see the day approaching. And I don't know about you, Mama, but I see the day approaching. Do you see the day approaching? Amen. And so that day is approaching. We know that there's increasing warfare in the spirit. We know there's a tremendous amount of fire, uh, fire and, and, and warfare going on. Uh, in all of the world, how many know that their things are burning down as prophesied? Yeah. And you were all warned in advance that it didn't matter who won what elections or what have you. He's not running for king. He doesn't need anybody's vote. He is king. Uh -huh. And when he has declared that he has put a judgment on a nation or a group of nations, there is no place for them to run and hide. They can make all the plans they want. His judgments will come to pass. Amen, amen. and amen. And so today we're going to be talking about uh, a subject that I believe that we have to continue to do even more so as we see the day approaching. Because how many know it's awfully easy to give in to the darkness? There's tremendous amounts of darkness out there. But how many know that he commanded you and me to let our light so shine before men that they would see our good work? and glorify our Abba, which is in heaven. It's for that reason I'm standing here, as I tell you, my flesh doesn't feel like it. Amen. And so it's because of the spirit, the Ruach, that's the only reason why you're even getting this broadcast today is because of the Ruach, HaKodesh, who wants you encouraged and strengthened in your inner man. And saints, this is a time period when it is awfully easy, have you noticed, to walk away. It's really easy to walk away. 
Enduring to the end is not the easy part. Walking away is easy. Saying, I don't care anymore. No longer doing what you're called to do. Those are all the easy jobs. The hard job is to do what you're called to do. Finish well before the king. Somebody say amen. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 1. We're going to start there. No, no, no better place to, to start than in the beginning. Amen. And so as we look at this word, as we get into the beginning of this word, I just want to encourage you, first of all, um, to, to understand that his desire is for you to know his ways. He doesn't want you confused. So if you're living in any state of confusion, if you're struggling with understanding, I pray this broadcast really blesses you and encourages you and helps you so that you can do well before him. Amen. And so let's turn in our Bibles to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. And it says, In the beginning Elohim created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Ruach of Elohim moved upon the face of the waters. And Elohim said, Let there be light. And there was light. And Elohim saw the light, that it was good. And Elohim divided the light from the darkness. And Elohim called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And so we see that he starts off creation, not by creating sun and moon, which is where we derive our understanding of day and night. But that didn't happen until the fourth day. Amen? So what's he doing here? He is dividing between light and darkness. Amen. And so let me just help you with this because I believe there's a lot of people that just only look in the natural. And so these are spiritual discerned things, right? So what is he meaning by the word light? Well, he means understanding and life. Notice that he did not declare the darkness good. Selah. He said... He saw the light, that it was good. The light, that it was good. Amen. He didn't say the darkness was good. He just said that he called it night. Amen. And so darkness represents ignorance and death. Ignorance and death. Okay. Uh, so darkness is, is a way of saying someone is, if, they're, if we're saying the people are walking in darkness, even gross darkness, even though it's the middle of the daytime, but they're still walking in darkness, what are we really saying? We're saying they're not walking in understanding. All right? They're not walking in the understanding. Versus walking in light means, as we were talking, uh, we've talked many times about being children of light, it means walking in understanding of his kingdom, knowing these things. Right? So, like he says in the, in the scripture, he talks about the, the, the children getting caught unawares. We talked about that last week. Uh, and of course, why is that? Because they walk in darkness, but ye are not like them. Ye are children of light or understanding. So you have life in you, right? Amen. Say amen. amen. And so you have life in you. You have blessing in you. And for that reason, uh, he has made a distinction. Now, does everyone have that? No. Mashiach said the blind lead the blind and both fall into the ditch. And so we know that darkness, even gross darkness, has covered the people. An absence of understanding. And so you will explain things. All of you have experienced this. Uh, many of the remnant experience this all the time. I mean, uh, I hear notes from you all the time where you're trying to explain something to somebody and they're looking at you like you've got three heads. Uh, they have no light or understanding. Amen. <clears throat> and so when, when Yahuwah is hovering by his Ruach over the deep. He is hovering over the dark. And when he declares, let there be light, he is declaring into that darkness, let there be understanding. Let clarity come. Let the truth come in. Let righteousness come in. These are all things carried by the light. Now in the natural, the words, let there be light, they're still reverberating through creation. Remember that sound produces a wave. And when Yahuwah Elohim Almighty makes a sound, it never stops. 
Amen. Your and my voices, the wave would die off, right? Not his wave. Creation is still hearing the words, let there be light. Amen. And so he continues to speak to us that we would have understanding, that we would not be in the dark, that we would not live in darkness. Somebody say amen. amen. He doesn't want that. He doesn't want you walking around like the heathen, like the pagan, like the, uh, the publican, if you will, those that don't know him and they don't know what's going on. So they're walking around wondering what's going to happen next. You have a blueprint, so you know what's coming. You knew this was coming. You may not have known exactly how it was going to manifest. You might not have known exactly what he meant by forehead and right hand. You might not have known exactly what he was talking about. You might still be struggling with whether or not that's it. But when they stop you from buying your time, buying people's time or selling your time, which is based to your economy, without which you cannot function, checkpoint has been met, saints. Amen. Remember where they stick the test in your forehead. They go through your nose, but they're going into your forehead. I mean, even in the natural, they're doing it. And so saints understand that these are the things that he spoke of. So we know these things were written. We're not ignorant of them. We're children of light. We knew they would come. The world didn't anticipate it. And that's why they continue to fall for every trick of the devil. Amen. And I'm so grateful for the remnant that are awake. In Proverbs chapter three and verse 11, the book of wisdom or understanding, so light, the book of light, right? So if you're looking at the book of Proverbs, you're picking up wisdom left and right. If you read this and understand and gain understanding, your mind gets filled with light. Come on, saints. My son, despise not the chastening of Yahuwah, neither be weary of his correction. This is Proverbs 3 and verse 11. For whom Yahuwah loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. So those of you that are getting correction right now, get used to it. I said get used to it. Don't chafe against correction. Correction happens to those that are loved. You know what happens to the people that are not loved? No correction happens. They just summarily get cut off. No warning, no nothing. So what would you rather have? Being cut off with no warning or would you rather have correction? I would rather have correction. She is more precious, meaning uh, wisdom and understanding. She is more precious than rubies and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand, riches and honor. Length of days. Are you hearing me saints? Length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is the tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. And happy is everyone that retaineth her. Who's he speaking of? He's speaking of wisdom. He's speaking of understanding. Amen. That's when he speaks in James. He said, let her, let patience have her perfect work. He continues to speak in this way so that we would have an understanding of the softness, the subtleness, the beauty of the Ruach as we are led into the various things that he wants us to understand. And how many know that we have to want wisdom? You ever try to put wisdom into somebody that doesn't want it? You ever try to do that? You ever you want to know what frustration feels like? Try putting wisdom into people that don't want it. Try making people wise who don't want to be wise. Try making people uh, learn that don't want to learn. Any educator out there, anybody that's ever tried to teach a class, minister to people, help them in any way, if you find people that are not really interested in the subject matter, you are going uphill seriously uphill and it's going to be a difficult challenge you have got to somehow create interest in the subject matter i mean and and it is very very common for people to act and to behave um in a, in a manner that is is antithetical to actual instruction so in other words they're not really um, open to receiving and as a result they are not going to be chastened they're going to be cut off you understand so this is, not a light, this is not a light word here. This is a very serious word. Um, so that's why he's warning you, don't be weary of correction. So if you're one of those people like, man, every time I turn around, it's like I never do anything right. Can I get anything right? I know how that feels. But the fact that you're being corrected is a good sign. It says you're still loved, you're loved, right? And you're receiving it. 
and this is a good thing. It's when you're no longer receiving correction, when you're done. Now, there's nothing but brutal tactics coming your way. Amen. So if I were you, I would rather he just correct me. I would rather be corrected every day if I have to, because he continues to demonstrate his love through his correction. When he came down and hovered over the deep, he was bringing correction. Come on, somebody help me now. He brings it. He sent himself in because something needed to be changed. Now, I want you to understand something. From that point forward, everything he did from that moment forward was not for himself. It was for others. He was already good right there. Right there. Elohim was good. And so everything he did after that was for others. Every single thing from the first verse of the scripture was for you and for me and for others, amen? And so he's bringing a correction to creation. He's looking over the deep and he starts to speak. Why? Because he doesn't see what he wants to see. He doesn't see what he's envisioned. He doesn't see what's in him, right? He wants it out here where we can see it. And so he begins to speak. Let there be light. The very first thing, I want a division between ignorance and understanding. Somebody say amen. amen. How many know that light hath no fellowship with darkness? Light expels darkness, right? Well, it's true in the natural as well because when you try to mingle people who have understanding with people who don't, how much fun is that? Oh, you guys probably been trying that. Boy, I bet you that was fun. <laughs> okay, you mix with people who have no understanding You'll be fortunate if you get out of there physically with your life. They will turn and rend you. And this is where all the persecution is coming from. Because we get so excited about sharing every revelation. And we don't realize we're amongst enemies many a times. So we need to be very careful. Amen. And so he is saying despise not the day of his chastening. Uh, because the understanding that you gain is more precious than rubies. Anybody pricing rubies lately? They're pretty expensive. Uh, length of days is in her hands. And so she is going to strength, uh, strengthen you in a day when others are dying. That's the power and, under, and importance of understanding. And so this is what's being poured, by the way, in creation from the very beginning. From the very beginning. All of earth groans. All creation groans for the manifestation of the sons of Elohim. What is the distinction about the sons? They keep his ways. Amen. They honor father. That's why creation's groaning for the manifestation of the sons of Elohim. And that's why she responds when we speak. And when we call upon creation, creation responds to the voice of the sons of Elohim. I'm so grateful for that. We are not foreigners on our own land. This is earth made for us by the Holy One of Israel. Amen and amen. And so he made this land for us to enjoy. And this is why he talks about things like the tree of life, right? Wisdom is the tree of life. She is a tree of life to them. That's what he says in Proverbs 3 and verse 18. She is a tree of life. Now, if you turn to Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 5, just go over one more chapter Get there quickly and look at verse 5 of chapter 4 of the book of Proverbs. And it says, get wisdom, get understanding. There's nothing ambiguous about that. And so it says, get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. So don't go anywhere. Don't get weary hearing these words. Amen. Don't get, don't have a difficult, don't struggle now. Stay with us. Stay with me, church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he says, forsake her not and she shall what? Preserve thee. Love her and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor and when thou, when thou dost embrace her. Right? And so he is telling you right now in advance, before you go any further, if you want to find something that you need to go get and put it on your things to-do list, wisdom is the number one thing. 
And wisdom is taking knowledge and understanding and producing great results, by the way. So when we have results, we can look and see if it's wise or not. The results tell us wisdom is justified in her children. Amen. That's what Mashiach said. Wisdom is justified in her children, meaning wisdom is revealed by its offspring or results. So you know something was wise later. You may, you may not know something was wise right now. You may think, that looks foolish to me. Why are they doing that? And then later on, you go, ooh, that turned out to be wise. Wisdom is justified in her children. And so what is Yahuwah saying? He's saying to exalt wisdom, to exalt it and make it important. Why? Because it'll save your life. Knowing what's coming, knowing how to conduct yourself, not just knowing the prophecies, not just knowing the scriptures here and there, not just having been to a few meetings where you know enough to where you know things are coming, but wisdom is knowing what to do. Knowing, knowing how to be in front of the problem and stay there. This is what we need to pray for today. And this is what I'm believing Elohim for all of you. Now, in the middle of your Bible, literally, if you dropped it on the floor and it opened exactly to the middle, you'd be at Psalm 119. So that's how easy that is to find. <laughs> all right. Turn with me to Psalm 119, verse 103. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts, look at this now, watch this now. Through thy precepts, which many people threw away already, right? They tossed these. But he says, through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn and I will perform it that I will keep thy righteous judgments. So these are decisions he's already made. Like you don't have to rethink fornication. He's already judged that. You don't got to rethink adultery. He's already made a decision, right? And he says, I am afflicted very much. Quicken me. Listen to who's speaking. See if you can figure out who's speaking here. He is one that would come thousands of years later and die on a cross for, for those of you needing a hint. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Yahuwah, according unto thy word, except I beseech thee the free will offerings of my mouth, O Yahuwah, and teach me thy judgments. Right? So that is a cry of Mashiach. And he is crying out to his father, to father, as all sons do, teach us your ways. Right? What does the scripture tell us about Mashiach? That he grew in wisdom. That's what it says. He grew in wisdom. So he came and had to walk this out just like you and I do. And this is what makes him an extraordinary example to every one of us. He was tempted in all points, just as you and I are, yet without sin. He outclassed it all. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody give him some praise for he earned it. He sit at the right hand of power. He is king of kings. And I'm so thankful that he's our high priest, that he ever lives to make intercession for us. Because we are not that good. We're struggling. Come on, somebody help me. Help me now. I don't care who you are. From apostles on down, battling, man, battling on this earth. This is a tough place to be. And he knew it. And he warned us about it. He warned us that we would need a lot of understanding. So perilous he are these days that he actually exclaims. He actually lets out. When I return, will I find faith on the earth? Every time I hear that. Mm. Woo. Talk about get me out of my chair. That will get me out of my chair, no matter how I feel. Because my king will find faith on the earth when he returns. Amen and amen. If Remnant House has anything to say about it, come on, saints. If any of our brothers and sisters have anything to say about it, somebody help me now. He will find faith on the earth. Somebody say amen. And so... He tells us that he's afflicted. He, you know, this is us with him, right? And he puts his word in us. He quickens us. What does it mean to quicken? Bring you back to life. Bring you back to life. And so this is the resurrection power, bringing him back to life, bringing him back to the after the three days are over. You just got to know that same resurrection power is working today to bring you out of the carnal, out of the flesh, out of the natural thinking and move into the things of the spirit. Because you must be born again. Somebody say amen. 
in 1 Chronicles chapter 7, we see a very interesting scene. And David has declared that he is going to make a building for Yahuwah. He is going to take energy and effort and stone and precious things, and he is going to build a magnanimous temple. So he gets very excited about this. And he doesn't, he, he goes, he goes about his way, and the word of Yahuwah comes on to the prophet, and he tells him specifically, you need to go talk to David. Now, this is a very important moment because this has to do with where we are today. You're going to see it in the spirit. If you, those of you with eyes to see, you're going to see it in the spirit. This has everything to do with where we are today. First Chronicles chapter 17 and verse 4. It says, go and tell David my servant. So he was, he was uh, the, the prophet was going home. And he turned him around, go and tell David my servant. Thus saith Yahuwah, thou shalt not build me a house to dwell in. Everybody catch that? Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not build me a house to dwell in. For I have not dwelt in a house since the day that I brought up Israel unto this day, but have gone from tent to tent, from one tabernacle to another. You see his preference. The tabernacle represents the human being, the tabernacle is his design. Are you seeing this? So he is himself speaking, saying what he want, what he preferred. He made it clear. Wherefore I have walked with all Israel. Wheresoever I have walked with all Israel, spake I a word to any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedars? Not once did I ask you to do that. Now, therefore, thus shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith Jehovah of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, even from following the sheep, that thou shouldest be ruler over my people Israel. And I have been with thee with us, however thou hast walked, and have cut off all thine enemies and before thee, and have made thee a name like the name of the great men that are in the earth. Also, I will ordain a place for my people Israel, and will plant them. Notice that he is in the land of Israel at the time he's saying this, but he says, and I will ordain a place for my people Israel. That's kind of interesting. And I will plant them and they shall dwell in their place. Why doesn't he say in this place? And there shall be moved no more, neither shall the children of wickedness waste them any more as at the beginning. And since that time that I command judges to be over my people Israel, moreover, I will subdue all thine enemies. Furthermore, I will tell thee, that Yahuwah will build thee an house. Watch this now. And it shall come to pass when thou days be expired that thou must go to be with thy fathers. He's starting to speak in the spirit saints. You got to hear this. That I will raise up thy seed after thee. Is he talking in the natural? No, he's not. Listen, saints. We shall be of thy sons and I will establish his kingdom. And he shall build me an house and I will sustain or establish his throne forever. And I will be his father, and he shall be my son, and I will not take my mercy away from him as I took it from him that was before thee. But I will settle him in mine house and in my kingdom forever, and his throne shall be established forevermore. Who's he talking about? You know he's not talking about Solomon. Solomon is not the one that he's prophesying about. He's prophesying about one greater than Solomon who had come. A greater than Solomon had come to establish the kingdom of David. For he was descended, naturally descended of David. And why was that important? So that no one could lay a charge at his feet. Amen. So that his DNA was clear. And it's true to this day. The DNA of the sons of, of David are still clear. Amen. And so the sons of David remain upon the earth. And he empowers who he desires to empower. And he, placed who he, he places who he wants to place in power and positions of authority. I'll tell you, saints, people are struggling right now because of one very basic principle of the kingdom. And that's that Yahuwah Elohim sets members in the body as it pleases him. He never said it as it pleases the people. It's as it pleases him. 
and he sets the members in the body accordingly. And so we see in 1 Chronicles that he makes a promise to David, right, to establish a throne forever. David is so overwhelmed by this. If you continue to read this account, he goes, puts his hands in his, his face in his hands, and he's like, what am I that you would even think of me? Well, you know it's not because of David. It's because of who would be coming. We now know that he didn't know that at the time. But we know who would be coming through David's line, right? We know who, who his sons and daughters are, I mean. We know who would be like David chasing giants. Somebody say, I mean. And so he, he knew exactly what he was talking about. David might not have fully understood because David didn't have the full understanding. He didn't have the vision that you now have, the benefit of the greater light of the Ruah, uh, of the, of the um, Brit Hadashah, the new covenant. You have the benefit of this. You have the benefit of the indwelling of the Ruach. David didn't have that. He had to rely on a prophet to come and tell him. He had to rely on omens and signs and different things. That you don't have to rely on because the Holy Ghost will speak to you directly, just like he spoke to that prophet. Amen. And so understand that this is where we are. And so he wanted to settle David's house. Oh, somebody help me. I said he settles David's house. Oh, glory. You see, that's what he is doing even now. He is building his house, his tabernacle. Amen. Anything we do in the natural, anything we do in the physical is representative of the spiritual principle. Amen. Even when you build a building to gather in, isn't it a small section or a small gathering which is supposed to be prophetic or representative of the greater gathering of all the saints? You can't do that if you know, you're only in one place. So you have your sample gathering, which is reflective of the greater gathering, just like they did in Israel with small synagogues and tribes and so forth. Just because you weren't with everyone didn't mean you weren't still part of Israel. Amen. And so even now, though Israel is scattered to the nations, yet we gather. And when do we gather? We gather every week in the spirit on the Sabbath day, remembering to keep it holy. It doesn't matter where we physically are. We stop what we're doing all over the earth to remember the covenant. We have signed the covenant. This is the thing that the blind don't understand. Those that don't have an understanding, they don't know this. They don't think it's even important. They're going to poo-poo it and pretend it doesn't even matter. So they're standing in front of him. And he, and he said that, uh, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, which is lawlessness or a violation of the Torah with no, no repentance, no nothing. And people are looking right past the fourth commandment like it's not even there. Like he didn't even write that, remember the Sabbath day thing. That doesn't count anymore. Or the silliness of oh, every day is my Sabbath, which of course would require that no commerce be done on any given day of any week and you'd never put anyone to work. So you see how silly that is, right? We talked about that. And so saints, understand that he is bringing us to a place where our light really does shine. And the light means we have to have understanding. So when he says, let your light so shine before men, he's saying, let your understanding of his scriptures so flow through you that men can see it. Oh, come on, saints. But here's what we're seeing instead. We're not seeing that. Oh, we're seeing something else come through, men. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. Take a look. And this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Here's what we're seeing men do in the flesh. They're operating by a different spirit. For men shall be lovers of their own selves or narcissistic. They're a bunch of narcissists. And NPD is going crazy out there. Uh, so people with narcissistic personality disorder, that number is going up, up, up. And social media is not helping. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters. Oh, you see this every day. Proud. My goodness, there's so much pride out there. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Don't even get me started. Unthankful. This is one of my biggest pet peeves. Unholy, not set apart. See that? Unholy, not set apart. Without natural affection. Truce breakers. So you can set a truce with them. It won't matter. They'll still do something. False accusers, you see this? How many know that we're not allowed to bear false witness? If we make an accusation, it sticks. Incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded. Goes right in with that pride, right? Love is a pleasure more than lovers of Elohim. 
Now watch this, Saints. After all that list, can you believe this? Watch this now. After all of that, you would think they would have nothing to do with any kind of godliness, but no, 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 no. Nope, they're going to have a form of godliness because they got to have one of them too. They have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof from such turn away. All right, they have a form of, they look like they are saints. They look like they love Elohim, but they are lying. And I want to tell you, saints, the reason why there's so many counterfeit religions and worship tri you know, attempts is because the actual authentic worship of Yahuwah Elohim is the most expensive, time-consuming, um, interruptive religion, if you want to call it a religion, in the earth. To do righteousness, it's going to wipe you out compared to the others. The others are cheap imitations. You can go give them a tip and they'll tell you you're good. You can do anything you want, they'll tell you you're good. Cain, Cain runs that place. So whatever you throw up gets fire in his church, right? Anything you do is acceptable. Not with Yahuwah. Not with Yahuwah. You have to come righteously with him. It's expensive. If you do it wrong, you got to do it again. It's expensive. This is why it, 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 it was constantly under attack in Israel because they were always looking for ways to cut the corners and save a little money. You priced the bullock lately? Have you? Have you gone shopping for a bull? How about a few goats? They're not cheap. I mean, and, and so a bullock's like four or $5,000 depending upon where you go to buy it. And I, Solomon, the night that he got visited by Yahuwah, sacrificed a thousand bulls. A thousand times $4,000. You do the math. That's how many bulls he sacrificed. It's expensive, right? This is what people want to skip. They don't want to worship an Elohim that demands so much. They want to be the recipient. This is where they've deceived themselves. He gave them an opportunity to come close to receive from him. And instead, they made themselves the God. And they are to be worshipped as if they were so important. They flipped it. Now he should chase them. No pursuing him. No diligent seeking. No, he should seek them. And saints, this is the absolute twist and abomination that has been fed to the masses as a gospel, which is not the gospel. Let them be accursed who preach such a thing. And he told us clearly that he did not come to get rid of any of Abba's commandments. And so those that are saying that or preaching that or teaching that or rationalizing it in any way, and they're certainly not following Paul who kept the Sabbath according to the scripture 84 different times that we can identify so clearly they're not quoting him. Who are they quoting? What are they doing? Who are they following? They're following the wicked one. And this is why saints, especially those of you in the United States, you don't even realize the level of warfare you're in. You don't even realize what has been going on for the last 200 years on, on this terra firma. And how much of a war has been going on just to set you up for this moment. They started way back there. And so he told you they'll be natural. No, they will be without natural affection. They'll be truce breakers. They'll be false accusers. They're going to do everything in there. They want to win at all costs. Cheating, lying, stealing, killing, all possibilities. Because that's how desperately they want to win. Amen? By contrast, we have to win by the rules. We have to walk upright. We, the end does not justify the means in this kingdom. It does in the other kingdom, not in this one. Amen? And so we have to have wisdom. And understanding we have to have light so that we can produce good results in Matthew chapter 5 I'm coming in for a landing here Messiah is speaking to the church he's speaking to us and he's warning us about these days and here's what he tells us in Matthew 5 in verse 10 he says blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness's sake you see this so because you're doing something I told you to do and you're doing it the right way and they persecute you, they make fun of you, they insult you, they mock you, they play games with you, they try to sabotage you. It's the only day they ask you to go do something, all of that. Just understand that persecution is for your sake and, and yours, yours is the kingdom of heaven, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Because you were willing to stand even when they were doing all those persecutions. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely 
for my sake, because you're doing what he wants you to do, because you're obeying him. Rejoice and be what? Exceeding glad. Glad is a word we don't use too often. It means really, really happy. So be exceedingly happy, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt had lost its savor, in other words, you're not in sharing the good news, sharing the truth, being a contrasting picture, being light in the darkness, right? Where we shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing. Watch what happens to us, saints, because those who think lukewarm is no big deal, watch this, good for nothing but to be what? Cast out and trodden under what? The foot of men. Now that's a direct opposite of the judgment that is written in the book of Malachi that we're supposed to walk in. We're supposed to tread down the wicked. But the opposite is going to happen if you lose your savior. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick and give it light to all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Abba, which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the Torah. So there, that ends it. End is of the matter. Or the prophets, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. And they're not all fulfilled yet. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the Torah, till all be fulfilled. And that is the word of the king. And so anyone who says anything other than that is against Messiah or anti-Messiah. Selah. And so there's a lot of anti-Messiah spirits out there saying, oh, no, no, that's not right. Oh, no, no, let me tell you. Oh, no, no, I'll explain it to you. And they will sit you down for hours trying to explain their rationalizations based on their theories and concepts and Gnostic Gospels. You know, where they rearrange things in their, in their, psycho, their, they, their psychology of, of, of religion versus worship. Worship. We should thousand bulls. Right? Thousand bulls. What do you think about that? He wanted Yahuwah to speak to him. He was already done paying for his sin long before that. that he didn't need a thousand bulls for his sin. There's nowhere in the Torah that it says you need to bring a thousand bulls. No. Right, Mama? Yeah. There's no place in the Torah that says anybody, even a king, has to bring a thousand in order to worship. So what was Solomon doing? And he is giving everything he got. And Yahuwah is watching. And he is pouring out all he has. And he's going, he's going to get a word. How many know that when you're that determined to get a word, Yahuwah is going to honor you? And look what he did. He said, because you didn't come here asking me for gold or silver or wealth or the heads of your enemies, but instead you came asking for the principal thing. You came asking for wisdom. <laughs> what a prayer. What a wise prayer. Because wisdom will get you everything. And so because you didn't do that, he said, I'm going to give you wisdom such that there will never be another like you. And I'm going to give you all those other things that you didn't ask for. Amen? And so his prayer, wow, what a prayer, right? How do I go in and out before your people? This is my prayer as well. And we all should pray that prayer. How can I go in and out before your people? Your people are great. Your people are amazing. I don't want to insult or offend any of them. Show me how to go in and out before your people. Amen? This is a big word. And I believe it was the wisdom of, of the Ruach in Solomon that he put it in him uh, to ask that amazing thing uh, and to speak such great words to Yahuwah. And so let me encourage you all that if you're wondering what to do and you don't have a lot of light, you're sitting here going, I don't have any light. I don't have anything to share with anybody. I need light. Then I'm just going to pray for you right now that you would go all the way into that fire. You would come all the way in. No half in and half out anymore. Because I don't know if you notice, but they're killing your exit. They're, they're destroying your retreat. There's no place to go back to. They hate the believer. They hate the remnant. They will not welcome you unless you abandon Yahuwah. And so understand that. And I'm going to pray for you 
right now that light would come into you and that you would shine like a city on a hill. Heavenly Father, I thank you for every one of my brothers and sisters. I thank you for your heart towards them that your desire is that there would not be a weak one among them, not a feeble knee among them, but instead they would all be strong and very courageous, that they would stand their ground, that they would not be afraid, even in the face of great persecution, but instead would, would joyfully, excited happiness, remember what your, what your word has promised us. And so, Father, I just pray for every person. I pray for every single one of them to be set free. I pray, Father, that their light would shine in such a way that men would see their good work without having to say a whole lot, just their good works so that they would glorify Abba in heaven. I pray, Father, for the courage to do the right thing, even when others are doing something else. And I pray, Father, that you would cause my brothers and sisters to no longer be affected by the words of others, but instead that they would set their chin like flint to their Jerusalem to finish their race and finish well before you. In Mashiach's holy name, I pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just preached myself happy. I wasn't even in a good mood when I started, but now I am. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Mama, I'll tell you, I mean, we've got nothing but work that's going on, and we're constantly preparing for the fall feast. Uh, we're working all the time so that those that do get gathered together, those that we do get to interact with, we're prepared for. We have no idea what that's going to end up being. We don't care. We're going to follow him. Amen. He's just continuing to bless us, opening doors before us uh, and shutting some. Amen. And so we have to be sensitive to that, saints. And I know many of you are praying for us and standing in faith for this house. And I cannot thank you enough for that support. Please continue to pray. We've got so many open positions and so many open, uh, so many openings, if you will. But Yahuwah has got to bring the right people. You cannot just have slots filled. It's got to be the person he has chosen. We have already seen what happens when people push themselves forward. Uh, they can't handle it. This is a lifelong call. This is not a one year, two year, three year thing. And by the way, eternity is life. Life on earth is a season. If you appear for a moment and vanish. So somebody's saying, you know, I don't, if, when I offer friendship, <laughs> it's for the season called your lifetime. Amen. That's, that's my season. I mean, it's over. It's just, this is such a short life anyway. So people shorten it even more, I don't even get. I don't understand that. It's not the way we operate. And so we're forever people, and we're focused on forever. And those of you that are, again, part of this house or want to be, if you're not part of this house but want to be, let us know. If he's given you a word to be a part of this house, then let us know the word he's given you. See, we don't control that. We do not control that. You do. You and him. That's got nothing to do with us. We're just going to do our job. So if he's assigned you here, he's going to tell you. He's going to give you a word. He's going to direct your steps. He's going to order you. And he's going to, he's going to expect you to obey him. And that way, I don't have to tell you anything. Because I like it better when he tells you. Because if I have to tell you, then who knows what you might or might not believe. Amen? And so I just want to thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast. I want to thank you for, for sitting in here with us. Again, thank you for your patience with us as we're, we're still in transition. We're still putting these pieces together. And I'm so thankful for every one of you. And I pray that you're, you're continuing to be steadfast in him. Thank you for your support. Those of you that are giving, there's a link in the description if you're going to be bringing your tithe and your offering. We certainly are uh, humbled by that. And it is our honor to receive them and also to pray for you. So thank you for that. Those of you that are standing with us, Oh, what an exciting time to be here. Aren't you just thrilled to be on the earth during this time? I sincerely pray you are the overcomers written in the scripture. You are they who he says they overcome by the blood of the lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they do not love their lives even unto the death. Thank you so much for joining us here. May Yahuwah bless each and every one of you. And remember... Yahusha Mashiach, he alone is king of kings.
Lord is a shield all around me, and I will fear no evil, for I know that love will follow me. The Lord is my shepherd.
like you.